are those non-motor offs or are they simply just non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease, right? And one of the things that I find really interesting, I'd be fascinated to hear the panel's um, opinion on this, um, do, do you think there can be non-motor offs without motor offs? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think uh, at times the non-motor symptom is the first symptom that may come on. And, I, and if a patient takes their dose, they may never get that motor off because they have aborted, so to speak, their non-motor off. Right. So the reason I bring that up is because I think people really have to understand that oftentimes non-motor symptoms are going to be the first symptoms of off that patients will report. So we have to, as physicians, we really have to be asking about this, or we might be missing a lot of that. We, we know that patients rate these non-motor symptoms as probably most deleterious to their quality of life and their daily activities when we, when we ask them in different types of surveys. Yeah. I also have the experience of patients who intentionally take extra medication in situations where their mental acuity is needed especially at the price of having dyskinesia. In fact, many patients are very tolerant of mild dyskinesias because there's something extra that you get from the medication, a mild stimulant effect or more alertness. So we, we have to be in tune to the fact that the analogy of improving motor symptoms, which has a threshold effect at a certain blood level, isn't necessarily the best dose effect for the mind to work best. There's, there's more research needed on this topic, and it also may be an argument why more continuous therapies that don't have fluctuations, don't have the withdrawal of this psychic enhancing effect uh, doesn't occur. And, and I think uh, many patients have discovered this on their own. And I, th I think that would be, that's sort of um, exposed in patients when they come in terribly dyskinetic, but they tell you they feel off. Right. And, yeah. you know. Or they feel great, right? despite exactly. they looked like a mess and their family says, well, wait a minute, there's, something's wrong here. But yeah, the overuse of levodopa is, is of concern because it's not a drug of abuse, obviously, but many patients are taking far too much. But there's a reason for that, and perhaps we have something to learn of the role of non-pulsatile therapies to ameliorate this withdrawal and feeling bad psychically uh, in gaps that, that might not translate in terms of motor off. But in general, more patients are undertreated than overtreated, so to speak. And, and I think the overtreated patients are, um, that's the patient demanding that treatment typically. I don't think it's the, I think most physicians tend to undertreat their Parkinson's patients, but then you occasionally have the young, typically male patient who engages in this dopamine dysregulation syndrome is demanding large amounts of dopamine despite the fact that they're clearly not off when we see them in the office. And they say, doctor, I'm so off when they're wildly dyskinetic. Yeah. And that's why Peter bringing up the issue that most of our patients would rather be uh, dyskinetic or slightly dyskinetic than off, then are we as physicians under treating them because we are so worried about the dyskinesia? So we should uh, be also helping their off because off can be worse than their dyskinesias. Yeah.